call the meeting to order. Ms. T, would you call the roll, please? Here. J.R. Huddleston. Here. Jennifer Johnson. Here. Bill Lucan. Here. Travis Orbach. Here. Larry Pratt. Here. Linda Barbell. Here. Melissa <laughs> Miles. Here. <laughs> Thank you. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remember, Council, if you have a conflict of interest, please let uh, the rest of your Council know before you vote. Need a motion to approve an amended agenda. The amendment is to remove new business item C. New business item C is a plat of lot S-27R of Boulder Falls Business Park. If you go uh, in your packet, <coughs> to that uh, plat. At the top of the plat, there's a note. An eight foot utility easements on the lot line common to former lot S-26R and lot S-27 is vacated with this plat. So looking at the plat, there uh, currently are two lots. Um, the south lot is S27. The north lot is S-26R. Uh, so they share that common um, property line between them. And there's an easement. Currently there's an easement on that line. So if the easement were to be vacated, um, then any utilities that currently are in there, the city wouldn't be able to get in and work on them. Uh, I asked the uh, water uh, department this morning to confirm whether there's sewer and water in that, uh, on that property line, in that easement, and they confirmed there is, <coughs> excuse me, a sewer line that runs west to east on that property line. Uh, so we can't approve it tonight uh, because approving it would vacate the property. So that's why I'm asking to have it removed and we'll get this run back through, uh, get Anderson engineers to remove that particular note. So that's the only amendment is to remove new business item C. I make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Removing business item C. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, into our minutes, uh, first one, uh, item A. Can I get a motion to approve minutes from the May 2nd special council meeting? I make a motion to approve the minutes from the May 2nd special council meeting. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Our next um, minutes, uh, item B. Can I get a motion to approve an amended minutes from the May 6th regular council meeting? Make a motion to approve the amended minutes from the May 6th regular council meeting, adding and approve to the review and consider the request from I'm sorry. Uh, request from Challenge Dakota doing business as Stars, Stripes, and Steps. Second. Second. Discussion? Uh, Misty, I believe you had pointed this one out. If you could share with council that uh, why this particular one's in front of them. Uh, I was contacted by Dusty Pence after I sent her the minutes for submission to DOT, and she's concerned because the word approved wasn't in the minutes. So I told her we could amend them and get it in there. You reviewed and acknowledged we're, we're doing it. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. 
on to claims. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the bills in between? I make a motion to approve the bills in between for $185,774.45. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the motion passes. Can I get a motion to approve the current claims? I make a motion to approve the current claims of $133,294.89. Second. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. And our last claim is going to get a motion to approve wastewater purchase of a 2024 Chevy HD 350 truck. Make a motion to approve the wastewater purchase of a 2024 Chevy HD 3500 truck batch, $69,875. Second. And Misty, could you give an explanation why this one's showing up here? Council remembers I gave Misty permission because you gave me permission to give Misty permission. <laughs> um, we had two conversations about this truck, uh, the fact that uh, it exceeded the original estimate in the 2024 budget, but the wastewater folks had figured out how they were going to go ahead and fund it and stay within budget. In fact, they're uh, $5,000 under uh, couple budget items that got combined. Uh, so you gave us approval uh, to go ahead and purchase the truck with the expectation that the bill would be in front of you and we just didn't get it in front of you uh, the last time. So uh, reached out to all of you and you agreed that when the bill was in front of you, you would approve it. Oh, that's why it's here. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Communications from the public. Is there anyone who would like to address the council tonight? Don't be shy. All right. Uh, we have a 710 public hearing. We're just a couple minutes away from that. Then we have a 715. Why don't we go ahead and jump ahead to our personnel actions. If I could get a motion to approve personnel actions A through L, and if you read the motion real slowly or recite it, we'll get closer to our 710 <laughs> first public hearing. I make a motion <laughs> to approve Personnel actions items A through L. Second. <laughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Um, I abstain because my daughter's on the personnel list. All right. Did you get that, Misty? I have no interest. Andrew, do you have everything ready to go? Yeah. No. All right, so we'll uh, open a public hearing at 710. Oh, I'm sorry, Andrew. 
So we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing at 710 uh, to act on the license application from the Hot Springs Rotary Club for a special sale alcoholic beverage license application for the 4th of July dance event on July 3rd at Centennial Park, 275 North Garden Street. Is there anyone here that would like to address that? Council, do you have any questions? How many years have they been doing this? <laughs> That's why nobody's here, because they've done it for years. Yep. Anyone else? All right, we'll round up and close the public hearing at 711. We need a motion to either approve, deny, or postpone the license application from the Hot Springs Rotary Club. I make a motion to approve the license application from the Hot Springs Rotary Club for a special sale alcoholic beverage license application for the 4th of July dance event on 7-3-24 at Centennial Park, 275 North Garden Street. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the motion passes. Uh, okay, Andrea. Sorry about that. We've got That's another right. public hearing at 715. Am I? Uh, <coughs> Hello? So if you're still uh, updating the council at 715, we'll ask you to take a pause and okay. we'll go to the second public hearing and then we'll come back to you. Hi. It's on. It's on. Okay. Okay. Um, good evening, Mayor Nelson, City Council. On May 30th, Western Dakota Technical College had a community stakeholders meeting here in Hot Springs for all of the Southern Hills. There was a rich discussion of local community needs for educational opportunities. Um, discussion around getting more information to high school kids about the advantages and opportunities at Western Dakota Tech as well as potential relationships and programming for veterans. 20 stakeholders, local stakeholders attended. Business Park. Um, I met with the Airport Advisory Committee on May 2nd and I have a meeting with FAA and DOT along with Ivan Venner and Bob Nelson Jr. on May 29th. Black Hills Area Community Foundation Committee Fund. In the fall of 23, Shedco facilitated the development of a housing committee in response to an invitation from Black Hills Area Community Foundation. Having the formalized committee allows us to apply for GAP funds from BHAFC for housing projects that involve development intended for community members at or below the 80% AMI for our state. If anybody would like to have a chart of what that those current numbers are, I'm happy to send it out. SDSU Landscape Architect students were here as part of the active transportation grant we applied for. They surveyed all 402 blocks in the city limits, surveyed a group of stakeholders, and attended Taco Tuesday at the space in order to canvas committee members for their input on infrastructure for increased activity in the town. I have a 42-page hard document of the recommendations, and again, I can send out a digital version of that to anyone who'd like a copy. What it is called, the, the resulting document is the Building Active Transportation in Hot Springs, South Dakota. It was completed by the landscape architecture students at SDSU. Building one, I've continued to create interest in building one at the state vet's home by inviting developers to a walkthrough and explanation of the history and our need for rental units. Remote workers mastermind group. In January, I started a mastermind group for remote workers in Hot Springs. We've had four meetings so far, so far focusing on how remote work requires different management structures and approaches. As the coach, it's been informative for me to listen to people who are embedded in well-established industries who've had to shift to either hybrid or remote work and what their challenges and the gains of doing that have been. 
engaged South Dakota. In January, Shedco was asked if Hot Springs would be the West River representative to participate in a project identifying the top local pro problems and potential solutions throughout the state through a crowdsourcing survey. The initial story will be produced by South Dakota Newswatch. The Cheeseman Center for Democracy, Democracy researchers will use these survey results to guide in-person session, in I'm having trouble with my S's today. So, uh, Sessions, yes, stop. Yeah, we'll ask you to pause. <coughs> Looking for a break there. Thank you, Travis. <coughs> All right, so we'll open up our 715 public hearing to act on the license application from the Hot Springs Chamber of Commerce for a special sale alcoholic beverage license application for the wine, walk, and play event on May 24th, 2024 at the following locations. The Hot Springs Makers Market, 108 South Chicago Street at 108 South Chicago Street. Ace Hardware, 207 South Chicago Street. Changing Seasons, 223 South Chicago Street, Second Chances, 603 North River Street, Chautauqua Artisans Market, 629 North River Street, and Scoby Kombucha, 713 North River Street. Is there anyone here from those organizations that would like to speak to the council or anybody in the public that would like to uh, address that? Council? Have any questions? Just a clarification: the uh, the wine that's dispensed does need to be consumed at those locations and not walked through the city. Is that correct? That's what I thought it was too. So that's a yes. My understanding is not my bad. I've never been to it. I'm sorry. No, I, that's my understanding okay. also. I, I kind of wanted, that was my understanding also. I may not have personally complied with that in the past, so it was a reminder to myself and anybody else that might participate. You know, Bill, in response to your, your question, um, I may sound like a terrible person, but that would be nice to when we do have these things that people do represent those questions that are being asked, that they can answer those questions for us. So just want to put that out there in a nice way. Thank you, Larry. I can speak to any questions that you might have. I'm on the chain board, board and also the retail committee that puts the event on. So if you have questions. And your, your um, question, the answer to your question is yes. Okay, yeah. thanks. And there will be shuttle a shuttle service with the Prairie Transit this year rather than the golf carts? I think so. Are you a driver, Larry? Uh, we got two drivers. Um, we're arm wrestling right now to see which one of us wants to do it. <laughs> but we have an understanding. Um, Barb said that there will be. So, yes. Yes, sir. It, it is a great time to, to get out and enjoy our new roads and our new sidewalks and, and meet people in the community or reconnect with people in the community that you may not uh, get to see every day, so it is a great, uh, great opportunity for us. And just to let the general public know, <clears throat> there will be two stops: one on the, the one end of the town and one on the south end of the town, and be running back and forth constantly. So that if you walk from the south and get to the north, and you don't want to walk back, you can catch the shuttle back down to where you originally parked, and vice versa. Right. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, Brad. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, no questions from the public? All right, let's go ahead and close the public here, and it's 719. And if I can get a motion to approve, deny, or postpone the license application from the Hot Springs Chamber of Commerce for a special sale alcoholic beverage license application. I'll make a motion to approve the license applications from the Hot Springs Chamber of Commerce for a special sale alcoholic beverage license application for the wine walk and play event on May 24th of 24 at the following locations. Hot Springs Makers Market, 108 South Chicago Street, 
Chase Hardware, 207 South Chicago Street, Changing Seasons, 323 South Chicago Street, Second Chances, 603 North River Street, Chautauqua Artisans Market, 629 North River Street, and Scobie Kombucha at 713 North River Street. Second. Second. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. All right, Andrea. So I think I was talking about the engaged South Dakota process. The initial story after the surveys, are, uh, the crowdsource survey will, is completed, will be produced by South Dakota News Watch. And the Cheeseman Center for Democracy Researchers will use those survey results to guide in-person sessions in each community that will bring together community leaders to discuss how to make solution-driven progress to address those concerns. There are some anticipated issues that will probably bubble up in every community. Those are the lack of and cost of housing, childcare, and the workforce. The goal is to identify the specifics of those problems for those local communities and then share what's being done to address them to a statewide audience in hopes of encouraging collaboration. Project Engage South Dakota was announced on March 26 at the Cheeseman Foundation Democracy Conference at USD. Stories and in-person sessions will be done from April to September. We haven't been called yet. So Cheeseman has October and November to produce a report. Newswatch will publish at least one follow-up story that will summarize the findings. And lastly is the Energize Conference. That's two days away. We have 141 registrants who will be here May 22nd and 23rd for a conference filled with innovations and ideas for increasing quality of rural life in communities across South Dakota. Our speaker is Michael Perry, who is a New York Times bestseller, humorist, and musician. He'll present Meeting Your Neighbors One Siren at a Time, as he is a volunteer fire fighter in his community of 498. Based on his experience, oh, sorry, attendees will have 14 different breakout sessions to choose from. I passed out the chart of all the options for everyone. An evening of social activities and food, as well as live entertainment with Wild Blue. If you miss the opportunity to register, you can still attend the keynote at the Mueller Center on Wednesday by paying at the door at noon. Does so anybody have any questions? Sure. I do. Okay. I need a clarification. I'm looking at my calendar and I have energized for tomorrow and Wednesday. You said Wednesday and Thursday. It is Wednesday and Thursday, right. the 22nd and 23rd. Tomorrow we get together and get it all together. So the committee does. At one o'clock, is that one The SDSU team will be here, extension team will be here and, and our team will meet with them and we'll stuff the swag bags somewhere, sometime after 2 p.m. Right. And uh, hall chairs, get together the drinks. The tent will be here for setup at about 10.30 on Wednesday. I believe Bob Nelson Jr. is going to oversee that with the maintenance crew. So. Sorry. That's fine. Okay. Uh, all right. Anyone else? Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. <clears throat> All right, on to our only resolution of the evening. Can I get a motion to approve resolution 2024-11? A resolution to amend the citywide <coughs> fee resolution? Make a motion to approve resolution 2024-11, a resolution to amend the citywide fee resolution, airport courtesy car charges. Second. Discussion? Would you explain how this came about, why we're doing it? 
We revised the, uh, as I reported last meeting in the uh, Airport Advisory Committee, uh, the courtesy car policy was revised to just limit the courtesy car usage to four hours only with the purchase of aviation fuel within a 10 mile radius of the airport. So this resolution updates the fee schedule to remove the charges for longer usage of the courtesy car. And that's just one car, right? It's all, it's all, all the courtesy, courtesy cars. cars. Okay. And how many are there? Three. Okay. Yep. It's not the yellow one, is it, truck? It's not Tweety. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? In our packet, we show resolution 2024-10, and the resolution is 2024-11, but this one, 24 2024-10 does show uh, the corrections in it, but we do not have a document that says 2024-11. You approved 10 at the last meeting and that didn't get changed. So we'll just change that resolution to 11, which was the motion, so. It's correct right on the agenda, not right on the document. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. On to our new business items. Uh, new business item A, can I get a motion to authorize Hot Springs Police Department Chief Ross Norton to purchase firearm upgrades? Make a motion to approve or to authorize Hot Springs Police Department Chief Ross Norton to purchase firearm upgrades in an amount up to $27,000 to be paid for by a future supplemental appropriation. Second. Discussion. Chief Norton. So as you and I were texting back and forth, you've had, my understanding is you've had a number of conversations with council, so they have an idea of what you're gonna be reminding them of, but the biggest benefit to you going over it again is for uh, the public in general to hear uh, what you're proposing. Yes, sir. Um, so in front of you guys, you have my, I assume you have my proposal there, uh, with kind of a breakdown of what we're trying to do. Yes. Um, I guess I'll, I'll break it into two separate parts. Um, the proposal that I'm requesting is for improvements to our current fleet of city-owned patrol or duty pistols. Uh, we own Glock 17 pistols uh, with factory night sights on them, and then um, we have TLR Streamlight um, flashlights for those or for those pistols. What I what I've researched and what I found is uh, a company up in Rapid that could take those Glock pistols, put them through their machine, and then mount red dot encapsulated sights on those on those pistols, making them, in my opinion, and a lot of law enforcement officers' opinions, much more proficient, much more accurate than hard iron sights. Um, some of the benefits to that are accuracy, um, quicker uh, target acquisition. Um, less need for uh, multiple rounds downrange. Um, with accuracy comes proficiency, comes more hits on target. Um, and then something else to consider, um, because our current fleet of Glock pistols don't have these bells and whistles, I'll call them, um, we have multiple officers within our organization who carry their own uh, personally owned firearms. And I've had discussions with other chiefs around the state at uh, the Chiefs and Sheriffs Conference in Deadwood a couple weeks ago, and this actually came up as a topic of concern for some issue, or for some chiefs because they allow officers to carry their own firearms. And uh, the question comes into effect of, well, who's responsible for the maintenance, the inspection, and the, uh, you know, the, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word. Who's, who's responsible for the, the 
that that gun's going to work when it, when it needs to. You know, we have multiple officers with multiple manufacturers carrying different guns, and so theoretically we would need those guys to be responsible to maintain and work on those guns, whereas if we upgrade our current fleet, every officer will, ca will carry the same exact gun, with the same exact ammunition, with the same exact optics, and the same exact magazines. Um, so one single Glock armor, which we have one, can inspect and maintain all those guns, and in my opinion, the liability falls off the cities of the, or excuse me, falls off the shoulders of the city because we don't have different people carrying different firearms that we're not inspecting and maintaining. Um, so that's kind of my my spiel about the pistols. Does anybody have any questions up to this point? I would have to check because we have five who currently don't. So part of the implementation would be that we've supplied these guns with these encapsulated sites and the holsters that they would be expected to carry them and there would be no discussion about that. They would carry them for sure. Anybody else got any questions about that? Okay, so then the next portion of my proposal is, uh, is the rifles. Um, we have we have duty rifles currently. They are um, DPMS Panthers, some of which have 16-inch barrels, some of which have 18-inch barrels. Um, they have EOTech red dot sights on them, which are fantastic optics. Um, however, the length of these guns and the fact that there's a single red dot on them uh, give me cons give me some concerns. Um, the, uh, the overall length of the guns that we currently have on our fleet at full expansion is 36 and a half inches long. As many of you know, uh, you know, that's, I, I like to use a trailer park or trailer house uh, dimensions, you know, 30 inch, 28 inch doors. Um, we've been in and out a lot of those lately, clearing buildings for squatters, for burglaries, residential burglaries and everything like that. And we've got officers going in to clear these buildings with these 37 or 36 and a half inch guns and the safety of our officers, in my opinion, is, is in effect right now because the overall length of these guns, and they're not suppressed as well, um, exceeds the, the overall width of a lot of these doorways and these, these buildings that we're searching. So a proposal that we've looked into is going to short-barreled rifles. Um, the, the rifles that we're looking at right now are 10 and a half inch barrels. Um, they come equipped with hard iron sights, and we would transition our current red dot optics onto the new rifles, so we would have a primary sight, and then if for any reason that failed, we would have backup sights that came with the rifles. Um, the rifles that we've got quoted also have a lifetime warranty on them, um, meaning any manufacturer defects, and it actually includes wear and tear, so if for any reason something happens in the field, if anything happens in the patrol vehicle, as far as they get marred up or beat up in a patrol vehicle, we contact them, they send them out, they send out a new one. Um, we also have critical use replacement with this quote, which means, God forbid, if an officer is involved in an officer-involved shooting and DCI or another entity takes possession of that firearm for evidence, you contact them, they ship you a brand new one. So, I mean, as it currently lies, we have, I don't know the exact age of our rifles, but when Officer Richardson was here, he did an inspection of, multi, of all the rifles. He was our armorer at the time, and he found that a couple of them were inoperable due to um, bad barrels. Um, so we've actually got a couple that are out of service at the moment. Um, and then included in this proposal would be suppression. Um, we've looked at lane suppressors out of Rapid City to see if they could provide us with um, suppressors for our new rifles. And there's been some communication about, yeah, you're gonna buy a short-barreled rifle, but now you're gonna throw a suppressor on it, so you're actually gaining any advantage. And in my opinion, the added advantage of suppression um, is paramount. The guns would actually be shorter overall length by about two inches from what we currently possess, and they're fully suppressed. So you get a shorter rifle with suppression, so now disorientation, you know, um, loud volume is no longer a factor inside a residence if, you know, if the round gets shot off and while we're conducting a search or um, anything like that. Um, there's also been some questions as to 
in this wait, in this wait till next year. We put it in our budget for 25, and my request is that we do this as quickly as possible for a couple of reasons. Um, the current climate, as things are going right now, um, we've had a lot of these high priority, high stress, dangerous calls recently, and they're not decreasing, they're increasing of anything. Um, and I know it's not here, but you know, Custer County, we had a homicide a couple weeks ago, the same day we had a shooting in town, or just outside of town here. Um, when I gave my initial presentation to the Public Safety Committee, the eight shifts that I worked prior to that day, my gun was out of my holster. And you know, some people might say, well, was that completely necessary? And I'll tell you, I've gone years without ever pulling it out on shift, and I did it eight consecutive days in a row. So I just want to upfit our guys with the best tools that they can use to make sure that they go home at the end of their shifts. I hope they never have to use them, but I'd rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. So that's what I've got for you guys. Council, any questions? Yeah, help help un unconfuse me here. Okay. You got 26,282 for that. Then over here, I'm seeing a 5,000 number um, for your, um, your black mirage covers. I mean, is this, I mean, is all this inclusive together? Uh, what? Yeah, so the total project <coughs> cost would be, of what I have quoted at this moment, is the 26,282.76. Okay. That includes the milling, the red dots, the rifles, the slings, the flashlights, that's top to bottom total project cost. Okay. Does that answer your question? Sorry. Yeah, it makes sense. I just okay. wanted to hear it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and along those lines, Larry, the reason that I'd asked to up to 27,000, uh, these were the quotes uh, at the time that the chief got them. Uh, if council approves the purchases, I uh, just want to make sure, um, you know, go back and during the actual purchase that maybe a price uh, hasn't gone up, so that there's enough there to, to fund it. Okay. So Thank you, that's sir. the reason for the up to 27, uh, which is higher than uh, uh, totals that he's come up with. Anyone else on council? Discuss the appropriation again. You were you were mentioning maybe taking from somewhere else and using this, like from vehicles. Yeah, just the unassigned fund balance. Oh. Yeah. We actually split our supplemental appropriations into two times a year because it requires ordinance. So you'll at your second meeting in June with this council, we'll approve the first reading of first one with all the things you've approved up until, which would include this if you do tonight. And then the new council that starts gets to approve the second reading to understand what you've approved that wasn't budgeted for the year. And then we do it again at the end of the year. So we kind of bottleneck them together because it is uh, two readings, publication and passage. So you're approving it now, but you won't approve the actual supplemental appropriation until the first the second meeting in June and the first meeting in July. I guess I'd just like to say I appreciate, you know, anytime we, we look at a supplemental appropriation of this size, it's, it's uncomfortable, but I appreciate the chief paying attention to the environment that he and his officers have to work in. In when you, when you look at incident investigations, when you look at near miss investigations, you look at preventive action and corrective action. Preventive action is when you do inspections and audits and you identify hazards and you say, what can I do to prevent that from, that hazard from manifesting? And I believe that's what the chief has done here. He's identified issues before they've happened in order to prevent them. My belief is if, if we don't take the prompt action that he's asking for and something did happen, we would be right back here looking at the same corrective action. Looking at the same activities, the same equipment upgrades. So 
Anytime you can address a hazard before it manifests, your money ahead, you've avoided the liability, you've avoided the loss, and so, uh, in my opinion, again, we've we put the chief in a leadership position and we've asked him to do leadership things and, and I think he's done that. So thank you, Chief, for doing that. Thank you. And then the other implication is that these rifles will be with us for a long, long time, right? Based on yeah, with the warranty manufacturers uh, stand, yep. standing behind them. Yep, and they're, they're, they're designed specifically for law enforcement and like I said, the critical use replacement and the lifetime warranty, yeah. I appreciate you taking care of your team, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? May I ask questions? Yes. We asked about uh, the WLAP for a long time. Are you sure about how long people estimate that Oh, I mean, they're the lifetime of the rifle. So I guess I would have to contact the manufacturer to see what they deem to be the life. But I would say... I don't want to say forever, but yeah, I would say a decent amount of time. And then what are our plans with the surplus? That's, um, Travis asked me that question today, and I'm, I'm open to whatever. Um, I, I was a little leery. They offered a, some of, the, I guess I should say, some of the vendors that we've talked to have offered to purchase our fleets from us, but they're for pennies on the dollar. So I didn't think that was the most responsible way to do it. Um, in this quote, I, did, I guess I didn't mention that, I apologize, at the very bottom there's, there's rifle training bolts. So two of, the, two of the rifles I would like to turn in, of our current fleet, excuse me, the two of our current rifles I would like to buy these training bolts for and we convert them from functional rifles into training rifles so we can have them at our disposal for you know, force on force training. And then the remaining fleet we could surplus, we could au auction. Yeah, auction, we could, I'd be open to whatever. And what about the ammunition? Would they use the same? Yes. Okay. Yep, same caliber, so everything that we have currently will transition. Now, we need you to stick around. We're going to the lifetime warranties and rules and we're going to carry these weapons because I believe that we talked about these same kind of things with our last gun purchases, so stick around. Absolutely. It's a plan. I recently <clears throat> um, viewed a investigation about police um, surplus arms and um, there's I don't have the specific numbers off the top of my head but in the last year or so over 50,000 of them have ended up in criminals hands because of the way we get rid of our surpluses so I would like you to take that into consideration when you're viewing deciding what to do Absolutely. Because that just shouldn't be happening. Yeah. Anyone? <clears throat> anyone else? Is there anyone in the public that has any questions? I would like to thank you for addressing Gary? Addressing some of the Gary, could you come down and give us your name and address, please? <coughs> <coughs> You're at Camp 441, South 6th Street. I'd like to thank the Chief for addressing some of the questions that I had after the last meeting. Thank you for that. We understand that the holsters that you have on me. No, they're because they have encapsulated that Okay, great. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. Ms. T, would you call the roll, please? Here. Uh, yes or no? Yes sir. or no? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Yes. Larry yes. Larry Kraft. Yes. Bill Lucan. Yes. J.R. Huddleston. Yes. Deborah Johnston. Yes. Melissa Niles. Yes. Linda Barbell. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. On to new business item B. Can I get a motion to review and acknowledge the Fall River County agreements? I make a motion to review and acknowledge the Fall River County agreement 
to hold the city of Hot Springs harmless for any damages arising from the water pipeline and infrastructure. Second. Discussion. So this is in front of you, Council, because um, the um, Justice Center, the jail, um, the county uh, came to a construction meeting uh, that we have every Tuesday with the contractors uh, with a request to run water and sewer underneath the, uh, the new highway up by the courthouse because the plan for uh, current the current plan from the commissioners is to put the jail on the east side of highway 385 uh, and the property that they own um, and they wanted to, uh, to tap into our line our sewer line and our water line uh, the concern that uh, we had is they were asking the city to make the judgment uh, about the size of those utilities, what size should the sewer line be, what size uh, should the water line be. Uh, and I just didn't feel comfortable in putting that responsibility on our folks without knowing uh, the actual need of the building that they would be constructing. Um, so they uh, stepped up and said, okay, uh, if we release you, uh, we'll tell you what size we want you to put in, but if it's not right, we release you from that responsibility and then the cost is theirs if they need to dig up a brand new highway uh, to put the right size utilities in. So in my mind, that's why this is important uh, for the county to acknowledge uh, that the city put in the utilities, the size utilities they asked us to put in, uh, not knowing what size the actual um, architect will spec once they design the building for them. So does that mean this is a yes on the Justice Center going forward? Uh, or they I, just no, pre no. I, I, oh, okay. No. They're just preparing just in case. That's my understanding of it, okay. is that it, it appears they want to have it uh, right. in the empty lot across from the jailhouse itself. Um, if that's the direction they go, they now have uh, utilities available to that lot. They were informed, um, this was at their commission meeting, that um, pay this much now for those um, hookups or pay five times more later if they decide after the road's in. So that's why they're doing it now. So if they're doing it, though, that leads me to believe that there's some yeses coming down the pipeline. They just don't want to have that option, you know, be less desirable, I guess. Does that have any effects on our city, our infrastructure, if we, they start using, tapping into what we have? Can you talk into the microphone a little more, Travis, please? I was just wondering if, if they tap into what we have, is that going to affect, you know, our water and our sewer and all this and that? You know what I mean? Have we done a study on that? Yeah. The city? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it won't affect um, you know anyone else. It, we have enough capacity. Okay. How much of the road are they going to tear up <clears throat> if they do? Well, they, they, they won't be tearing any up now. Are they going to go under? Uh, right now, because of uh, what we had, the conversations we'd had during the, uh, the construction meetings, they've gone ahead and run the utilities underneath the road. Is that that little triangle with all those pipes in it? No, that's not it. That's something different. My mind just blanked. Apologies. <laughs> yeah. I'm in my own world, sir. I think they did go for the larger pipe because of that, well, because of this. I think they did go for a larger pipe than what they originally wanted to pay money for. I just want to feel comfortable with the idea that if this happens, they're not going to destroy the road that we're working hard to get put in. That's the reason that this agreement is here, is they understand that if when the building is actually designed and the architect is calling for a different, a, a larger capacity water line uh, and sewer line than the ones that the county told them to put in, that's on them that they'll have to pay uh, whatever the cost is to either bore under the road 
uh, or tear it up and put the right size in. Okay. Uh, I just was not comfortable putting that responsibility on the city because I could see two years down the road uh, somebody coming down and say, well, you know, the wrong size utilities are here are there. Who told you you needed that? And it's going to come back that it would be would have been Tracy Bastion that would have said, uh, you know, to do that. And that's it's right. not responsible of uh, for us to put that on Tracy when he doesn't even know the the specs of the building before it's even designed. All right. All right. Thank you, Mayor. And then I was going to say another thing: if they do get a wrong spec on there, the Fall River County people. Uh, People of Fall River County are going to ultimately pay for that if they get it wrong. So either way, just help. <coughs> Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the motion passes. New business item C was removed. Brings us to new business item D. Can I get a motion to approve a special sale alcohol alcoholic beverage license application? I make a motion to approve the special sale alcoholic beverage license application from HSP Loft Properties LLC for the 309 Family Festival fundraiser to be held at the Centennial Park 275 Garden Street on 7724. Second. Discussion? The oh, Brent. Hey, Yep, Brent Step, 311 North River Street, Hot Springs, South Dakota. Uh, zip code? No? No. Okay. okay. All right. And, uh, yeah, and I don't know if, uh, not to be unconventional with how y'all do things, but also item O on there kind of runs congruent with this subject that we're on on, on D. They're kind of tied hand in hand. But, yeah, we're doing a, a little family fundraiser. Uh, we're going to have a family. That's going to be an annual thing for us. So we'll wind up uh, just... We've rented out the entire park for that day, July 27th. Uh, Going to do bounce houses and things like that for the kids. Um, then have the raffle giveaway, which is going to be a couple of motorcycles. We're going to give to a couple of the local charities here in town. The application says the 7th. Should say 27th. 727. Yeah, it says 7724. Yeah, if you look down at item O, though. Yeah, I think she, yeah, I think she forgot the two on that first one. Okay. That should be on the 27th. So the date of the event is the 27th. Going back up to this one, so this application says the 7th, that's supposed to be the 27th. Can I see that? Yeah, this is the special, the one we're talking about now, the special alcohol beverage that we have. Yeah, this should say 27th as well. Uh, it should be exactly like the one that we have here. Yeah, it's, it's just one date. It's that the 27th of yeah. I'm glad you saw that. All right, I had it. I had it. Yeah. Had the wrong day. But yeah. No. So we rented the park. Uh, should be for the 27th of July. I better check your park reservation. Please do. Yes, that would be great. So, do we need an amended motion then? Yes, you can. As long as you agree to amend it, you don't need to re-read it. Okay. Should, so just approve uh, approve an amended motion for this particular item for the date of for the change the date from the seventh to the twenty seventh of July twenty four. Okay. You second. <laughs> Yeah, make sure you have the park reserve for the right day. <laughs> Any questions for Brent? Thank you for coming down, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, Appreciate it very much. And, well, I need to stick around for item O. Or we have to vote. Done? Yeah, yeah, and yes. Stay for that. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Congratulations. <laughs> New business item F. Can I get a motion? E. e, thank you. Can I get a motion to approve uh, 
to schedule uh, 2023 full audit readout and discussion on Monday, June 3rd at 6 p.m. Make a motion to schedule 2023 full audit readout and discussion on Monday, June 3rd at 6 p.m. before the regularly scheduled council meeting. Second. Discussion? I won't be here that day for the meeting. Okay. okay. All right. So for those on council that uh, have attended these before, this is uh, before the actual council meeting. Uh, they give um, council uh, a more in-depth rundown of the, the audit. Uh, and then um, they go back over it again during the council meeting. And if there's any other detailed questions, they're free to answer. They're, they're welcome to, they're happy to answer those also. But. So is this uh, going to be taped? Uh, we don't usually tape this. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Okay. If you have a question, so after you read the report, I should be Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. New business item F. Going to get a motion to appoint Hal Glanville to the cemetery committee. I'll make a motion to appoint Hal Glanville to the cemetery committee for a five-year term, 2024 to 2028. Second. Discussion. That a boy, Hal. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you very much. New business item G. Gonna get a motion to appoint Joe Nicochet and Luke Broyles to the Historic Preservation Commission. Did I get that right, Joanne? Yes. <laughs> All right. I make a motion to appoint Joe Nicochet and Luke Broyles to the Historic Preservation Commission for an initial two year term, 2024 through 2025. Second. Second. And both Joanne and Luke are here tonight, Council, so if you have any questions for him. Uh, Luke was previously on Historic Preservation, so he has some experience with them. Uh, Joanne and I talked about a week and a half ago, and uh, she brings some uh, knowledge and experience uh, to the position. So if you'd like to share any of that with Council, feel free. You're good? All right. Joe is the one that was here recently. Um, she's taking on the um, project of replacing all the windows in the Evans mm. apartments. And uh, she's got a good background, hopefully, that will help her through that <laughs> phenomenally large project. on a $6.8 million grant for the Evans to bring it into the modern. Public, can you hear her? Yeah. Drop the mic down. <laughs> and get so, close to it. <laughs> Is it on? Yeah, I you got to get hear. close to I'm it. I'm all though. clogged up, sorry. So I am working on a $6.8 million grant for the Evans. It's called a comprehension grant, and it is through HUD. And what it is is to, um, it's approximately uh, $80,000 per unit with the build, in the building, and that is to um, bring the building up to modernization. It may be, it was built in, like, you know, the, well, it burned down and then it was built, so the, the facade is, you know, the only thing original, so it's part of the historic. And so I have to keep on those lines with that and with the windows. Um, and as you know, we had a recent energy audit that says that all those windows should be replaced. So I just wanted to be part of the building. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for stepping up, you Thank and you. Luke both. We're getting a lot of interest in our historic preservation group. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Congratulations. 
Uh, new business item H. Can I get a motion to approve an automatic budget supplement of $4,357.18 to the wastewater fund? Make a motion to approve an automatic budget supplement of $4,357.18 to the wastewater fund vehicle repairs budget 604. 43250-42510 for hail damage repair of the 2018 Chevrolet Silverado VIN number 9321 caused by the 612-22 and 718-23 hailstorms. Revenue received from SDPAA claims GC2022-111391 and GC 2023-115933. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Getting a motion to approve new business item I, an automatic budget supplement of $11,520.90 to the general fund. I make a motion <clears throat> to approve automatic budget supplement of $11,520.90 to the general fund street lighting damage repairs and <clears throat> maintenance budget 101-43160-42500. For the replacement of a light pole damage in a vehicle accident on 3-31-2024, revenue received from progressive claim number 24-9276736. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Can I get a motion for a new business item J, an automatic budget supplement of $58,395.07. I'll make a motion to approve an automatic budget supplement of $58,395.07 with $53,395.07 to the wastewater fund improvements other than building 604 dash four three two five zero dash four three three zero zero and five thousand to the water fund services and fees six oh two dash four three three five zero dash four two two zero zero for the water and sewer main <coughs> replacement project grant reimbursement received from the CDBG grant number nineteen nineteen dash one zero seven dash sixteen second Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Can I get a motion for new business item K, an automatic budget supplement of $171,651.04 to additional sales tax fund? Make a motion to approve an automatic budget supplement for $171,651.04 to the additional sales tax fund, $164,639.97 to airport improvements, 212-21200-45420 for construction, and $7,011.07 to services and fees, 212-21200-42200 for construction administration, 10 unit T hanger. Reimbursement revenue of received from AIP grant funding number 3-46-0022-015-2021. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Can I get a motion for a new business item L, a travel training request from the rec from recreation instructors? I make a motion to approve the travel training request from recreation instructions instructors Allison Ritterbush, Taya Ritterbush, Emma Niles, and EPMS Aquatics Director Akoya Zimiga to attend American Red Cross Learn to Swim program in Shadron, Nebraska on 516 and 517. Second. Discussion? Yeah, it says here also Gabby Martin. Um, did, did I miss something? Oh, here it I says Allison Ritterbush, Taya Ritterbush, Emma Niles, and 
Akoya Zimiga, but on the paperwork it says Allison Ritterbush and Gabby Martin, swim instructors, recreation. Um, why is Gabby's, Gabby's name on there? Is she going or is she, what's the? The department head, but I don't think she's going to the class. That's okay, I just was okay. wondering. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Again, I abstain because my daughter's in okay. <laughs> Can I get a motion uh, on new business item M? A travel training request from Finance Officer Misty Summers Walton and Assistant Finance Officer Ariel Buckman. Make a motion to approve travel training request <clears throat> from Finance Officer Misty Summers Walton and Assistant Finance Officer Ariel Bachman to attend the SDML budget training in Rapid City, South Dakota on June 18th. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Can I get a motion for new business item N to approve a travel training request from Library Director Mary Terones and Librarian Heather Lee? I make a motion to approve travel training requests from Library Director Mary Terones and Librarian Heather Lee to attend a 2024 li Public Library Institute 62267 in Aberdeen, South Dakota, NSU campus. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, and can I get a motion on new business item O? Uh, and a, to acknowledge that notification of raffle from HSP Loft Properties. I make a motion to approve notification of raffle from HSP Loft Properties LLC doing business as the 309 General to raise funds for three different organizations, the Hot Springs South Dakota Angel Fund, Casting Vets, and the Hot Springs Volunteer Fire Department. Two motorcycles with an estimated value of 20,000 will be raffled off Drawing will be held Saturday, July 27th, 2024 at the Family Day Fundraiser in Chautauqua Park, or Second. Centennial Park. Second. Sorry. Discussion. Hello, Brent. <laughs> Questions? So the two motorcycles, are they the ones uh, in your... In the window there? Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get the promotion material now and then we'll do it next week. Um, we just want to get our state to the top and make sure that they will get the wrap on that arm. So um, we'll be able to sell those in the next uh, few weeks and then uh, move to publication with Brett and get some stuff going on for the next few times. Who built the custom motorcycle? Uh, Redneck Engineering. Uh, that's their movement model. Uh, it's a blue to hand cut and frame up in there. I think uh, it's also something else. If you're into motorcycles, it's a good looking one. Yeah, and yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy. This probably going to be pretty crazy, but we're going to make this an annual event. Uh, we're only doing 150 tickets on each one of them. Bikes. So the odds are really good for the other guys. So. Uh, that way we kind of entice and make a lot of community day for All right. Will you have representatives from each of the um, individuals being there? To t I, I know Jay will probably be there from Casting Vets. Um, I have not yet spoken with the volunteer fire department. Um, I did speak with uh, Michael up at the school regarding the angel fund. Uh, so. Whether or not they'll be there, I'm not sure. We just uh, we just designated the, the new cast and vets was going to be part of it uh, months ago, but we just designated the other two uh, volunteer fire department. Knew that was going to be there, then uh, the angel program was kind of lastly. So yeah, unless they you know tell me otherwise, I would assume somebody would probably be there. What kind of activities are you going to have? Uh, 
We're probably going to do some live music on the gazebo, um, bounce houses, slides for the kids, things like that. Uh, we'll have a little stand to sell people brats and just uh, probably going all out there, just kind of like the festival today. And um, what were your, what are the hours going to be? Uh, I think farmers markets there till one o'clock, so we're going to take it over at two, and uh, we'll probably try to wrap up by. I'd say nine or ten. I know we've got the park till midnight, but we're thinking that at the at around the we're going to give the bike away around seven. Uh, so we're thinking parents and kids are probably going to be drifting home after that. Anybody else that wants to stay, they can just go across the street to the restaurant for the rest of the evening. And we'll just be the entertainment inside. Oh, thank you. You know, I'd just like to say with all the road work and everything that. But it's really nice concert. It's really nice that you step up and do this stuff for the community. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. I, I, I didn't read it on here. Do you have to be present to win? No, you do not okay. have to be present to win. Uh, we're actually still working out all of the final details. Because sometimes in those in those raffles, you'll do a... Uh, that's, that's another... The beautiful thing about the grace period of the third days with the state right now. Some of them they'll do where they do like an extra fifty dollar charge per ticket to not be present to win, and then that goes to one of the charity funds, just kind of adds to the pot. So we've just kind of been tossing that around. But once we get that into print, yeah, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a moot point really because I, I don't think we want to require somebody spending that much money on a ticket that they actually have to be there. Of course, yeah. we'd like them to be, but well, yeah. If somebody wins and they're not from this state or this region, um, I know some different places they send it to them. Will they have to come back to get it, or will you? <laughs> oh come on! <laughs> want to make that want to make that public, right? <laughs> yes, they will have to. That is that is pick up on that local. So yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Brent. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. <coughs> On to our committee reports. Our first one, administrative and finance, JR, Melissa. Admin finance met on May 13th, one o'clock, here in the Mueller Civic Center. The president, we're Alderman and Chair, JR Huddleston, finance officer, Misty Summers Walton, Mayor Bob Nelson, Alderwoman Melissa Niles, Alderman Hal Glanville, and guests were Kara Hagen and Gary Telkamp. Old business. Additional costs related to water wastewater replacement, suspended sidewalk, and other road-related project costs, ongoing review and discussion. Water wastewater replacement construction contract has about 395000 Remaining to be paid. Uh, current contract total is $2,372,846.39. The CDBG grant of $770,000 has been fully utilized. Suspended sidewalk, $1.7 million left on construction contract, $3,965,567.39. Wayfinding plan only spent $27,181 out of 28,500 contract. Update number two, update city job descriptions, update desired minimum qualification, and add other desired qualification, remove South Dakota DLIC requirements, update Southern Hills golf course hourly, uh, our work hours and days description update the rec director number of hours title of development coordinator golf operation manager and description updates no report available number three discuss CDL the training and repayment is this necessary is there interest further discussion necessary to determine if there's a need to expand our current offering from just CDL B to include CDLA training and replacement. Number four, Fall River County Dispatch Agreement 2025 and beyond. 
uh, committee proposing the two to three percent annual increase for the next three to five years. Mayors to meet with Harvard County before 2025 meetings. Number five, surplus auction planning, PD bikes and four-wheeler uh, discussed uh, partnering with Berdine to auction potentially at the end of September, beginning of October. Uh, county and school potentially interested in offering items. Uh, rates discussed were 15% and items under 1,000. 10% over 1,000, and 2.75% high bid fee on totals. New business. Mayor items uh, discussed two interests in the mirror design on the north wall on University Avenue. Number two, city administrator items. City administrator absent from the meeting. Number three, committee member items. Discuss the Moolah Theater expense and revenue. This year had a loss of 2,000. Last year broke even. Low participation discussed and the possibility of changing the dates next year being considered. Uh, Mueller Civic Center interested in continuing with the program. Number four, monthly finance reports. Uh, Misty provided overview of the finance report through 430 and some highlights from the 2023 annual report. Audit report to be presented by Kettle Thorsten, Thorstenson on June 3rd at both 6 p.m. Full readout. And then again briefly during the regular scheduled meeting beginning at 7 p.m ongoing large construction project discussed and an election reminder to get out and vote. Number five, review repayment of expenses, training certification and clothing equipment document PD chief request. This item, sees, this item seems to have been satisfied. We're going to remove it from the future agenda. Item six, PD request to do weapons upgrade and potential cost review how to pay it, how to pay for it, should it be budgeted in 2025 uh, to be on the 520 council and it was approved tonight. Number seven, unbudgeted driveway repair expense at 308 Meadowlark, seven to 8,000, return, return to public works for further discussion. Number eight, proposed unbudgeted Magwater application, $8,800 Valley View, 6th Street, 1200 Estate, South Garden Street, Mockingbird Drive, and Eli Street. Return to public works for further discussion. Wayfinding update. Mayor provided an, provided an update uh, at the last council meeting. Nothing further to report at this time. Item 10. Kara Hagen, uh, Chamber of Commerce Storefront Pageant. This item was discussed at the beginning of the committee agenda. Kara asked for the city financial support sponsorship for a storefront pageant. She mentioned this was done in the past in 2015 with city support and good participation. Pageant to take place June through October 2024-25. Committee recommends supporting this request to provide $2,000 if the storefront pageant is offered to all businesses and not just chamber members. Payout totals are forthcoming. Will be on the 6324 council agenda for consideration. Item 11, 2025 budget meeting planning either July 23rd and 25th or July 30th and August 1st. The committee chair, me, advised can only make the July 30th, August 1 date, still awaiting other members' responses. Meeting adjourned at 2.47 p.m. Next meeting is June 10th at 1 p.m. at the Mueller Civic Center. Chair Huddleston, Chair. Melissa, do you have anything you'd like to add? Nope, it was perfect. <coughs> what Council? Were, what were those dates again? They were in my memo last month, too. July 23rd and 25th, or July 30th and August 1st. Correct. Okay. Council, do you have any questions? Oh, just just a comment. The um, the mural is going to go before parks at the next meeting, just so that there's no misnomers or any misinformation being put out there. 
I've got that one of my three items to update you folks on. Oh, you do? Okay. Okay, the mayor will give one later. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, JR talked about dispatch. Um, I'd reached out to Sue Ganji with the county, um, letting them know that we need to sit down and talk about uh, the dispatch contract. Uh, and I see Misty, city administrator, and myself meeting with um, the folks from the county. Uh, they're going to work on who that is uh, and give me some dates so that we can sit down and have that, that first discussion. Uh, I think we're pretty far apart in uh, our numbers. So it may be an interesting conversation. Uh, Larry was talking about the mural uh, on the um, north wall uh, at the top of University Avenue. Um, there have been two thoughts about what should be on that mural. I was able to meet with both parties uh, this afternoon uh, and look at uh, a particular design. They're both excited about that design. Uh, so we'll continue working on that. Uh, the school is offered to um, put the kind of final draft uh, um, on a, a larger paper, um, larger printout, so that we can get that ready for parks uh, for your first meeting uh, in June. Uh, we'll see if you folks you know, want to pass that design on to the full council. Uh, if you pass it on, then uh, we can have something in front of council for our June... 17th meeting uh, for council to uh, approve the mural. Uh, we're making good progress. I think we're almost there. The uh, $2,000 that JR was talking about, uh, so yeah, the, it's the uh, storefront pageant um, to put money towards helping, uh, encouraging folks to um, spruce up their storefronts. Uh, if council doesn't have any objections to having that uh, 2000 on the next agenda, uh, then we'll put that uh, in front of you um, for you to vote on. Oh. Just looking to see if you, you have any concerns with uh, the city putting $2,000 into a competition for all businesses in town. Uh, Isn't something that the Chamber of Commerce would do instead of the city? Chamber of Commerce is involved in it. Are they yes. getting involved? They're, they're putting some money forward. And are we, um, okay. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. Prizes um, will be awarded, I believe, about seven different prizes. $100 worth. Right. Yeah. yeah, going to be awarded. I got one observation or comment about it. If, if it's still on the same time frame we're talking about here, as far as the murals going, um, I know I'd mentioned to you about slipping some buffalo in there for showing school spirit, since the school will be helping out with the, the big picture. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that will stay in there. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not. I don't know. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Chair. Melissa. Airport advisory, Bill. Uh, next airport advisory meeting is Thursday, June 6th, 8.30 at the airport. I also would like to let council know that the T-hanger final inspection has been scheduled for Monday, June 17th at 11 a.m. Will be a report that night then? We'll have a report that night. We have a city council meeting that day. Uh, yes. Hopefully, we'll have a report. I have an observation anyway. <laughs> you said June seventeenth. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management, Travis. Uh, the Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management District uh, board meeting was supposed to have met in May, I apologize, I forget what date that was supposed to be, but it was moved, that meeting has uh, been moved to uh, Thursday, June 6th, 2024 at 7 p.m. Um, here at the Mueller Center. And I imagine we'll probably meet again in July to get back on track. So we missed uh, the May meeting and that's moved to, to June 6th. All right, thank you. Historic preservation, Deborah. 
Um, they'll be meeting again June 5th, 5 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Thank you. Evans Plunge Advisory, Linda. The Evans Plunge Advisory Committee met on May 9th, 2024 at noon at the Evans Plunge. Present were myself as committee chair, members Chris Hansen, Tom Nas, and Mara Smith. Updates, Chris announced that she was leaving at the end of June. Swim lessons will be May 28th through June 27th with 50 children registered so far. We have four people signed up for WSI certification, Akoya Zimiga, Allison Ritterbush, Emma Niles, and Taya Ritterbush that we approved tonight. Equipment updates, new steam generator is up and running. Hot tubs are functional and may need breaker boxes. HVAC units are ordered. Working on getting the outdoor pool open for Memorial Day. The front of the building still needs new siding and or paint. Double doors at the north end of the pool need work, perhaps a roll up door in the future. No monthly incidents were reported. Under other, we have three new guards on board with two new slide guard candidates. Janitorial staff is consistent at this time with three, with new people at the front desk. May is busy with school buses bringing students in from other areas. City crews have moved the picnic tables from the um, old food truck area to the grassy area adjacent to the parking lot. Kudos go out to Tom for testing the alarm system. Issues were discovered with a tech scheduled to come out to address them. The next meeting will be June 13th, 2024, noon at the Evans Plunge Mineral Springs, and we adjourned at 12.29 p.m. Any questions for Linda? Yeah, Linda. Um, <clears throat> Just an observation on things that y'all are fixing down there. Has anybody considered that dock on the north side? It has damage on the east side of it in the um, concrete. And when you know when it rains, it's going to start leaking into the ground there. Has that been brought up also? And that was on the north side? North side of the building, yes. North side of the building. No, nobody has mentioned that. Okay. Just, just an observation. The concrete has a crack? There's a big enough crack there where you can, it, it's, it, um, yeah, you can see it's worth leaking inside there. Hmm, okay. Big holes. Okay, thanks. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Parks, Thank Recreation, you. Beautification, Larry. Next meeting will be June the 5th at 2 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Center everybody's invited. I also want to make an, um, a comment here. Um, it was never brought up at the last meeting, but there were 24 participants for the Missoula play, which was a pretty good turnout. So just wanted to bring put that out there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Planning and zoning, Deborah. Planning and zoning met May 15th. 6 p.m. at City Hall. Present were Don Olstead, Dwight Wienia, James Forbord, Christine Heidebrink, Wayne Hageman. <laughs> Staff were Scott, Sco Scott Sogi and myself. Guests were Joe Allen, Stephanie Keller, Robert Parker, Dwayne Whitney, and Patrick Campbell. Um, under new business, which I just flipped wrong. Um, there was a bypass lot line revision brought forward, a shamanic lot line revision of lot 2SR and lots S-1R. Dwight questioned the access to the adjacent property, revised tract B, so the revision was placed on hold for access verbiage to be added to the plat from Anderson's engineers. Grandview Mobile Trailer Park, um, A, tiny home setback update. Uh, nothing has changed, so the tiny home is still sitting where it was placed prior to the required survey. B, park expansion with two new entrances. Um, this is not a public alley. The work is all on private property, 
so the city is not involved in the creation of a driveway utilizing existing curb driveway aprons. Um, that's up towards the far point before you turn right onto the bypass. And they want to put some <coughs> um, camping camper spots in the back part behind the first line of trailers. Um, number three, the Millbrant Somerville Street vacating. This has been on the agenda for several months. This is the old Lucy's Dewdrop or the Dewdrop drive in. Um, there's now no conflicts, so Don Olstead stated that the owners may now start the vacation process to include the easement process. They want to get rid of Somerville Street that's platted there between um, the drive-in and uh, the historic motel. But the big problem was is that <clears throat> one of the pins was in the middle of the driveway giving access to the motel all these years. So that all had to be worked out before um, this is all approved. Um, number four, Keller use on review. This is 606 and 610 Baltimore. Um, the Planning Commission felt there was no conflict issues with the request for a use on review to use the structures as business offices. So there's two little houses there. Uh, that have been rentals and she's considering using one as a realty office. And so she'll be going through that process. And then number five, Marchant Carport. Um, Jay and Laura Marchant requested a setback variance to erect a carport in front of their garage. The house sits on a corner lot, so the setbacks are 25 feet on each side. The carport would be six feet into the side yard setback, and the setback variance was not allowed. Um, Maverick Tire Lot Line Revision, um, approved motion by James and seconded by Christine. Was that, that was what we just stopped tonight. So apparently um, this is where Maverick Tires wants to build their new building back on this property. And uh, so that apparently has to be taken care of before that's gonna go through, but it was approved at the time during the meeting. Um, Joe Allen, Fall River County and Hot Springs Industrial Park. Uh, there was discussion about the present use of the storage facility and the use desired by a potential buyer the commission felt the property and its use is compatible with the zoning. And I believe the commission wants to trade a storage building that's up behind Sunny's in the old industrial park for the um, heating um, building storage that's behind the equalization, Department of Equalization, where they want to put the Justice Center. So they want to do a trade with Bill's Heating for the, up behind Sunny's, and then Bill's Heating would give that building that would then be torn down for the potential Justice Center. Uh, the Duane Whitney storage units at 1705 University Avenue, which is the building that uh, Barnyard Vet just moved out of across from the high school. The request was to be able to set up storage units on the property and to see if they are allowed within the city ordinances. The style of units are modular units that do not involve foundations. The area is zoned mixed use and the storage units are not allowed. Storage such as garages or sheds are allowed as long as it is in conjunction with the residents on the property. The commission did not feel this was a fit for the property. Um, and then number nine, River Mountain Construction, Jenny Fisher setback discussion. No action was involved as the golf course architectural board needs to look at the details and cast their opinions and decisions and then be presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission. And then Barn Owl Lot Line Revision. 
Uh, the lot line revision request needs to have a detailed drainage plan for the property to be presented for the commission's review. No action was taken. And that's on the property between um, Dakota Interior Stone, I can't remember the right name of that business, and the new uh, Accouters building. There's four parcels in between there with a little cul-de-sac planted, and they want to take that. Um, and it's called um, Barn Owl Drive. So they want to vacate Barn Owl Drive. So it's a vacation. Um, well, it's a lot line revision is what they're working on at the moment. But like I said, one person is going to own like the lower right quarter and then the other three that wrap around and up behind are going to be owned by someone else. And so, but the drainage needs to be uh, addressed and drawn up before the planning and zoning will approve it. And the meeting adjourned at 8 p.m. Um, the next meeting um, is usually scheduled on the third Wednesday, but that's going to be a holiday of June 19th, so we're moving it to the next Wednesday, June 26th, and we're maintaining the 6 p.m. Uh, time at City Hall. Any questions for Deborah? Yes, Deborah. Were they going back to that trailer court where they were going to park those motorhomes? Is that access through the alley? It's really not even an alley. I realize that. I but is that driveway. how they're going to access in there? Pardon me? Is that where they expect the motorhomes to access through that trailer? Or, I mean, through the alleyway? Okay, thank you. Yeah. It's on private property, so we really don't have say. The Mel Brandt Street vacating, it says we took care of that access issue that's been taken care of. Are we abandoning a section of the right of way or are we taking the whole street and vacating it? Not the whole street, it's only going down to like lot 10. If, if I had the map in front of me, um, so it'll... So we are going to abandon the section of it? Yeah, but we're maintaining the utility easement that's on it. Deborah was, uh, had mentioned that Dwight had approached planning and zoning about uh, his storage building um, proposal. Uh, he's asked to be put on the agenda for the June third council meeting to share um, his proposal with you. And I believe that uh, Ariel went ahead and forwarded everybody on council uh, his email and um, the design for the building. Um, uh, Deborah had mentioned that uh, it doesn't fit our ordinances, uh, but he still wants to um, talk to council about considering uh, waiving that particular ordinance. So. If he shows up on June 3rd, um, he'll make his case, yep. and we'll we'll chat about that. I believe the um, <coughs> ordinance states that private storage units are allowed, or you know, residential units are allowed, but not um, commercial. Mm -hmm. I think you'd have to change the ordinance too. I don't know that you have the authority to waive your ordinances for certain scenarios. I think it yeah. to change. Yes. It would. Thank you, Deborah. I was just wondering what what's the difference between residential and commercial storage units? The shed with the house. The oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Public safety, Bill, Jr. Uh, next public safety meeting is Thursday, June six, two p.m. in Mueller Center Conference Room. Thank you. Public Works. Bill, Hell. Next Public Works meeting is Tuesday, May 29th, 1 p.m., Mueller Center Conference Room. Thank you. Southern Hills Golf Course. Um, 
we met on May 14th. And that's when the report was done. I think it was uh, 13th that we met. Um, I was present, uh, Superintendent Happy was there, Clubhouse Manager Joe Lowe, uh, Colette Miller and Dave Merrill uh, from the committee. Uh, uh, pretty short meeting. Uh, the maintenance staff's uh, main focus uh, is on course setup and turf recovery from the winter. Um, Jason gave an update on the retaining wall project. Uh, there's, uh, it's mostly done. Uh, they're uh, laying down sod in front of the wall. Um, the landscaping, uh, topsoil, and HVAC units still need to be uh, uh, put on the top of the wall. Uh, Jill's report from the clubhouse. Um, uh, rounds for the year, they're currently at 1,398 total rounds for 2024. And at the same time in 2023, they had approximately 602 rounds at the time. So they've seen an increase of uh, almost 100% uh, in the number of rounds uh, at the same time. The season's passes for 2024 are at 140. They're down uh, from last year, uh, but they still have a couple more months uh, to see those season's pass uh, uh, increase. Uh, there has been an increase in the sale of punch cards, uh, with a lot of those increases coming from out-of-town folks. Um, so, got a good start on the year, and we'll hope that uh, the trend continues. Any questions? <coughs> oh, no city administrator report. Misty, do you have a report? I would just like to remind you to let me know if you're interested in attending the SDNL budget planning meet, uh, training in Rapid City on the 18th. And then also please let me know of the planning dates that you prefer. And so we can make sure that as many people are there as possible. And if I don't hear anything, I'm going to schedule it for the one that works for JR. He's the one who gave me his feedback. So. so, and the budget the budget meeting in Rapid is what day? Uh, June 18th. Mm. Misty, I would like to go, but uh, I might be having recovering from surgery, so. So I'll put you on my nose side. Thank you for that information. All right. Uh, we have an executive session uh, that we need to go into, so I'll defer my uh, comments until the next uh, council meeting. So if we could get a motion to go into executive session. Make a motion we go into executive session in accordance with South Dakota codified law 1-25-2-3 legal. Second. Second. Did you pick one of them? I don't know, is it Larry? We'll let Hal have it. Oh, Hal. Uh, so much. <laughs> what about nothing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Melissa. Melissa wants it. Give it to Melissa. Give it to Melissa. Give it to Melissa. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, and for the public, there may be possible action after executive session. So we'll uh, we'll take a brief pause, and then we'll see everybody in executive session. And if our attorneys could join us. Well, kind of have to bring them in here. A what? what? I was complimenting you. Oh, so thank let's, you. Uh, let's go ahead and reconvene at 918. We'll round up. And I believe, JR, you have a motion that you would like to make. I do. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a, I'd like to make a motion in reference to the Bodega Building 609 through 611 North River Street to authorize the city attorneys to draft a letter to the listing agent realtor Century 21, Risa Rutz, and copying owner Lance Redinger, um, and instructing and informing them of city position interests regarding the building. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. So we need a motion to adjourn. I would like to make a motion to adjourn for this evening. Second. Discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Have a good evening, everyone. Aye.